magnificent and holy is your name. Magnificent and holy is your name. Magnificent and holy is your name. Good morning, Fellowship Christians. And anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, can you just jump to your feet? Come on, we're here to reverence the King. Come on, the one who died for us, the one who laid down his life for our sins. Amen. The song just simply says, hallelujah, you have won the victory. Anybody glad about that this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning, Jesus. Yeah. You died for us, Jesus. Yeah. So hallelujah. You have won the victory. this morning hey you are the reason key come on can we lift it up say Should be excited about that. Say you are the reason. Hey, and you see that in majesty. Hey, we curse if you Lord say you are the reason. Hey, come on, shout it real loud right here. Say hallelujah. you 
blood. Come on, stay right there one more time. I know it was. No, it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Come on, somebody say, one day when I was, he died upon the cross. I know, I know. I know it was the blood for me. Come on, somebody make some noise if you're thankful for the blood. Come on, if you're thankful that he got up for your sins. Hallelujah, we're thankful for the blood, Lord. Amen. So this next part of the service, we're going to take 55 seconds. Just hug somebody, tell somebody you are happy to see them. Go, 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 tell them 55 seconds, amen. You are welcome here at F3. have amazing things going on at F3C. So the first thing I want to inform some about and remind others is our women's conference. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. It is coming up. Ladies, 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 we only have 19 days left. It will come just as quickly as you turn your head. So if you have not registered yet, please get registered. It is only $35. It is here on April the 19th. That is a Friday. Open Doors open at 6.30 p.m. And we have so much planned for you. We have, look at the, uh, the bulletin up there. We have great speakers, vendors. We got a swag bag. Swag bag. We have yes. fun. We have vendors. Free food. We have free food. Yes, and the word, y'all. We have great speakers, and I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how close I get to the Lord or how much I grow in the word, there is always a new level, amen? Amen. And there is something powerful that happens when women get together and worship. So don't miss it. Please come out and bring someone with you. I can't wait to see you there, amen? Amen. 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 And also, what uh, else? Yes, ma'am. So, guys, we need you. We need our volunteers, okay? We need you to come on out. We need you to volunteer. So, the plan is that we need some people in photography. So, yes. I know all of y'all like a good filter. So, come on out and show us how we use those filters. Yes. We need people on social media. Social media, yes. And listen, we all, as an extension of our life, it's like our, our phones, like, grew as part of our bodies, like, everywhere we go. Our yep. phones are in our hands, right? right? So if you like social media and you want to promote what God is doing, then join our social media team and tell the world what God is doing here at F3C. Amen, amen. Amen. We yes. also need help in the production team. This is not easy. And these folks yes. being here working it, working it out. Yes. So they do need some help with that. Yes, and also Kids Zone. Our Kids Zone ministry is always looking for people who love the Lord and love to pour into our children. So please, if you are not serving somewhere in ministry, please sign up today. We need you. 
God needs you, and you will be blessed. Amen? Amen. And also, our last announcement, please, everyone, take out your phones. We want you to follow us on our YouTube channel. If you are not already following us on YouTube, please click the QR code, follow us. You'll get Sunday sermons, you'll get our kids on lesson, and you'll get to stay on track with everything going on at F3C. Just stay connected with us, because we certainly want to stay connected with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. We will be moving on in the service with our uh, tithing video. Amen. costs, rising gas prices, medical bills, food and entertainment all compete for the limited funds that we earn, and oftentimes it's much easier to justify these needs than it is to heed the call to give. But this call is not meant as a hindrance to our physical needs. Rather, it is given in the Bible as a way for us to grow closer to God as we trust in His provision. So let's look at three biblical and practical truths that are meant to help us trust God with our finances. Truth number one, all our money belongs to God. Psalm 24.1 tells us, The earth is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. This truth begs the question of not how much of my money should I give, but how much of God's money should I keep for myself. Truth number two, giving away a portion of our income to the work and ministry of Christ helps us fight covetousness. Wanting things too much is incredibly dangerous for our souls. In Matthew 6, 24, Jesus paints a clear picture telling us that we cannot serve both God and money. Truth number three, tithing and giving beyond regular tithe will help strengthen our faith in God's promises. Philippians 4, 19 tells us that God will meet all our needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. The more we find and trust promises like this, the easier tithing becomes because they replace our fear of not having what we need with a reliance on God. And just like these three truths, all the other biblical teachings about money are designed by God to help us trust and rely on Him and not on the things that we own. In Matthew 6, 21, Jesus tells us, Where our treasure is, there will our hearts be also. In terms of money, this is saying that what we invest our money in is a signal of what our hearts are trusting in. So each time we face the decision to give or not to give, remember that it boils down to a faith question. Do I trust God's promises concerning my finances? Amen, amen, amen. All my people that trust God, just shout hallelujah in this place. Yeah. Happy Resurrection Sunday. All right, I'm going to say it again. Happy Resurrection Sunday. All right, now y'all got to say it back to me. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Look, we trust God, right? We trust God. Everybody trust God. Everybody trust God. Trust God. So, so this is the time we praise God for. For this day, this is a time where we continue to worship, 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 worship in our giving, in our giving. We always understand and know and talk about that God's not a trying, to, trying to get anything from us, trying to get something to us. So my job is just to encourage us and also to, to uh, help us see that God is a keeper of his promises. Amen. Do I have any faithful givers in the building that can testify that God is a keeper of his promises? Amen. If, if we do our part, if we do our part in being good stewards over what God has blessed us with, if we do our part by trusting God, if we do our part by continuing to grow in God through Jesus Christ, everything else is already taken care of. Do y'all believe that? How, how, many, how many of us understand how important it is for us to make sure 
that the kingdom of God is taken care of. Yes, amen. I mean, this is real talk. Yes. You know, one of my prayers, this is one of my prayers. One of my prayers is God, and, and, and I talk to Tasha about this all the time. We've, we've talked about this several times. Um, one of my prayers is God, just bless me. Watch this. And this is real talk. Bless me to be one of the biggest givers in church. You know why I say that? Because I understand the responsibility that God bestows upon us as givers. And then I also understand that, God, you know what? This is what I should do. And then I want to try you, God. I, I want to see <laughs> exactly what you would do as it relates to my, my giving. Oh, y'all y'all don't? Y'all don't? You don't? Anybody in the house do? Hello? All right, hold on. One more time. This is where all my faithful time. This time. You don't want to see what God would do in your life as it relates to your giving. You don't give so God can give back to you. You give because you do it out of obedience. But at the same time, God blow my mind in the name of Jesus. As I line up and do the things that you have called me to do about being a good budgeter, make sure I'm saving, make sure I'm investing, make sure I've got my retirement in place. Hello, 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 hello. Because that's what this is all about and be a giver. God blow my mind in the name of Jesus. I want to make sure that my generations after me are blessed, that they don't have to worry in the name of Jesus because of my heart to give. That's what this is all about because God connects his promises to our giving in the name of Jesus. We're not giving out of necessity. We're not giving because we want something back from God. We're giving because we believe that we are to take care of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. Boy, that was hard. I wish I had a few folk in the building in the name of Jesus. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. I love, I love every Sunday when we speak God's blessing over our giving. We speak what God has already spoken. We're not speaking and making stuff up. God's already spoken that he's going to bless us. So I believe there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And we should speak more life than we speak anything else. We should speak those things that are not as though they were. And walk in faith and trust God in the name of Jesus. Do I have any believers in the house? If you in the house, I need you to stand on your feet. If God has blessed you, if God has done anything for you, I need you to stand on your feet. Just keep giving God some praise. We are worshiping in our giving in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, so we're going to do our tithing declaration if you're first time here. Again, God doesn't want anything from us. He's trying to get something to us. I'm not trying to manipulate anybody and give it. That's between you and the Lord in the name of Jesus. This is real talk. I just want to see everything that God has promised me that he would do based on my faithfulness and based on my heart. Loving him and loving people. Taking care of him. Taking care of people in the name of Jesus. When I say him, taking care of God, it means taking care of his people. Take care of the least lost and left out in the name of Jesus. So let's speak life over what we are giving today. And I challenge you to be faithful givers, faithful tithers in the name of Jesus. And just see what God does. See what he does. So let's speak some life. Whatever you're giving on, if you're giving on your cell phone, I give offering through an uh, envelope in on my cell phone. Whatever you give, just lift it up in the air. Let's make some declarations right now in the name of Jesus. Y'all ready? God is my provider. favor in the workplace, favor with customers, favor with contracts and growth. I claim my business will be profitable. I claim unexpected gifts and blessings, inheritance, estates, interest, and rebates. I claim a debt-free life. I claim all spiritual blessings follow my giving. I claim perfect health, healing, and deliverance. I'm blessed and going out. All that I do 
will prosper in Jesus' name. That's biblical in the name of Jesus. Give God some praise in this place. Eternal God, we thank you for this day as we worship you in our giving. God, we thank you for just blessing us to give, blessing us with jobs, blessing us to pay bills, God, blessing us to save, blessing us, God, just to be good stewards, blessing us to create a great retirement, God, blessing us to invest, blessing us to be a blessing, most importantly, to the least lost and left out. So, God, we realize, God, that everything that you bless us with, God, there's even more as we are faithful to you and kingdom building, God. So, God, we trust you. We love you. We speak, and I speak as your under-shepherd, God, over everyone that's assembled in this place right now in the name of Jesus. As we trust and step out on faith and give from the abundance of our heart, give God knowing, God, that you will do exactly what you said you would do. God, I speak that you return at 10, 30, 40, 100 fold, God. We know, God, that you will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. So we claim it right now. God, bless the giver. Bless those who have desired to give but had it not. That the very next time the opportunity presents itself, they will have abundance, God. So we thank you. We praise you. For it's in the matchless mighty name of Jesus that we pray all over the building. Repeat after me. Be it done unto me. It is done unto me. In Jesus' name. Now shout hallelujah on your behalf. Yeah. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed in the sea. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed when we come. We're blessed when we come. And when we go, we can cast out every stronghold, sickness, and poverty. For the devil. For the devil is the devil is the Somebody say bless, 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 say bless, 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 somebody say bless, 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 say bless, bless, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, you say we're blessed. For the devil is the devil is transformed by one historical day from antiquity? Why does this one event persist to shake nations, stands against kingdoms, relentlessly remaining there in every test in time? 
Why does the life of one rabbi bring hope to the billions and peace beyond understanding, peace even in facing death? His axioms transcend culture, moving between and among every generation, offering new grace with each day to the poor and to the rich, to the young and to the old, each who calls his name. This is not just a page between the chapters of history, neither myth, metaphor, nor a line of spectacular exaggeration. His influence on every human life story is unfit to be placed into any existing category. No, Jesus isn't written into our story. Rather, our story is written into his. Every authority, even the grave, obeys his sovereign will. This is why we exalt the mighty name of Jesus over and over and over again. His victory has given us life. His mercies stand at the center of our faith. He alone holds the pen of history. He is the one true God, and at that, a God who died for us. Why rejoice? Why is this our anthem? The answer for why Jesus comes down to this. Jesus is at the center. His victory over the grave is written into every line between old and new, between death and life. There stands one historical reality, the resurrection of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God in this place, the resurrection of Jesus. That's why we celebrate this day. All right, y'all. Y'all doing good? Yeah. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Again, happy Resurrection Sunday. Look, we praise God for those that are streaming live with us uh, this morning. We had a 9 o'clock a.m. service. Uh, we did not stream live, but we're streaming live at 11 o'clock. We wanted to try one service today live. And as we continue to progress in this whole two-service thing, uh, Prior to launching the two services in August, we're going we're gonna to perfect everything. So we praise God for this day. For those that uh, may watch this now, watch it as a recording. This is a, this is a great day. Every day is a great day. But what this day represents is the reason why we can sit in here knowing that everything will be all right. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor. Just in case your neighbor came, just tell somebody you didn't come with, say, everything is going to be all right. Tell them. No, tell them like you mean. Turn to someone else. Tell them like you mean and say, look, I don't know what you're worried about. Everything's going to be all right. I promise you. Tell them, I promise you. I promise you. Just trust God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, so this is, this is uh, the day that the Lord has made. Uh, when y'all hear that scripture, and I, I said this not too long ago, because when I read the scripture now, it's one of my daily scriptures I read every morning and pray during my devotional. Uh, this is the day, and I said this last week, this is the day the Lord has made. Our job, God made the day. We're going to talk about this a little more. Our job is not to worry about the day, not to trip off the day, not to be concerned with the day. We said, this is the day that the Lord has made. The only job we have in the day is to rejoice and be glad that God woke us up this morning. Boy, listen to me. If you get that in your spirit and in your mind and in your heart, I promise you, you look at the day totally different. When, 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 when Watch this. When the day exposes you to crazy people and crazy stuff, See, some of y'all can't say anything because you the people that they exposed to crazy. You the crazy they exposed it to. So if, if I ain't talking about you, you should be excited. I mean, really, you don't trip off that. You say, God, I thank you for the day. 
I thank you for cray cray. Because it makes me better. In the name of Jesus. Why y'all looking all serious? Y'all all fly. Oh, I know what it is. Y'all dressed up. My bad. Y'all, y'all good? We're going to be out of here in a second. I'm just scoping y'all out. Y'all look so good. Brother Calvin, how you doing, sir? Good to see you. Good to see you. Is uh, Sister Shirley, is she, she was at the early service. Is she in here? Did she go home? She left. She did. Man, today is her birthday. Is, is her sister in here? Is Sister Allen? She was over. She left too. Okay. They took the early service. But today is her birthday. I'm going to say it live. She's 72 years old. I got the note. I got the message. That's my girl. Because you know what? And I, I hate that I didn't get to say this while she was here. I really do. Sister Shirley makes me feel good. No, 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 no. Y'all don't understand it. She is the only one of my members <laughs> that when she see me, it's like, Pastor! Oh! So I love, to see, I love her to come to church. I love to see her. I love to wait till everybody leave and I go in the hallway. She's sitting in there. So when she see me, I say, here we go. I'm going to feel good. <laughs> After all the cray-cray. <laughs> Watch this. She says, Pastor, and that makes me feel so good. Y'all should try it. <laughs> but shout out to Sister Shirley, 72 years old today. <laughs> amen, amen. Hey, 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 Minister Janet, we got to figure out a way to go back to acknowledging birthdays of the month on the first Sunday. Amen. Any, any, anyone have a birthday this month? Who had a birthday this month? I'm going to preach, y'all. I'm going to preach, I promise you. Who had a birthday? Raise you. Keep your hand up if you had a birthday. Keep your hand up. Oh, why y'all scared to put your hand up? Cause you are. Who is that? That's my, that's, uh, that's my little kinfolk right there. Man, put your hand up, man. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, look. March. Great month. All of my birthday people, I just said March is a great month. <laughs> Beasley, you got a birthday this month and you didn't say anything? Y'all should be like Sister Beth. Sister Beth celebrated her birthday the whole month. I started that too because mine's on the 2nd of October. Y'all put it on your calendar. 2nd of October in the name of Jesus. Put it on your calendar now. Matter of fact, I'm going to start reminding you starting April the 2nd. Countdown in the name of Jesus. All right? All right, here we go. Check this out. We're starting a new series. We're starting a new series uh, today. Starting a new series um, I'm so excited about the series because it connects with the Resurrection Sunday. So I try to be super intentional. I try to be intentional uh, and, and strategic in sermon uh, preparation what I give certain seasons. One thing God is showing me, and I want you to know this, and I, I don't want y'all to miss this. I'm, please don't, please don't miss this. Please don't miss this. I promise you. When God shows me something like this, do not, I'm, I'm, I want to encourage you, don't miss this. Because he's up to something. Because I'm always asking God, give me a word that's in season, in time word for your people. And it's not just when I say give me a word for your people first and foremost is for me so when he gives this to me I take it personal because it's always for me first so in this season over the next five weeks and it's probably going to continue after that I really want to deal with deal with um, the whole theology or the theological you heard me use this term all the time theological thrust of what resurrection truly represents in Jesus Christ. And that's hope. That's hope. It's real talk. Mother McLaurin, a lot of times when we, we use the term hope for the hopeless, guess what we are? I don't care what kind of job you have. I don't care how much money you're making. I don't care what you got going on. I don't care what's happening in your life, how, how you think of this or that. We are all hopeless without Jesus Christ. So in saying that, 
Sister Deese, in saying that, the challenge now, uh, and I don't know when God says change up, but is to give a word that is centered, Mother Bula, around faith, what your faith can do. What your faith can do. Because Jesus is hope. Jesus gives us hope. When all else fails, when folk turn their back, this is part of my sermon, when folk turn their back on you, when things seem as though that they're not going to work out, when it looks gloomy, when it looks dim, when you feel stressed out, when you're confused, when you just don't know what to do, when your body is aching with pain, Jesus is hope. And I, I submit to all of us. I submit to all of us today. I submit to all of us today. I, I just don't believe in, in, in church universal, in church universal, that we, we provide as spiritual leaders, we provide that direction for hope. Because people are hurting. And if you're not hurting now, keep living. You're going to hurt later. Then hurt to go. Then the hurt come back. Hey. Anybody like me about 35 years old? Anybody like me? <laughs> but like, you live for a while? I'm 35 and holding. I've been holding for a long time. And I ain't tired yet. <laughs> Watch this. When you get a little long in the tube, some of y'all old school, y'all know what I'm talking about. Young people like, oh, huh, what you talking about? Watch it. When you get some age, this is important for us to be able to tell folk that. That there's hope in Jesus Christ. Y'all ready? Hey, hey, can y'all do me a favor? Do me one favor. Do y'all have my theme song? Can you find my theme song? Help, help us, Sister Sean. I got to have my theme song. Some of y'all don't know my theme song. I want to show y'all my theme song real quick. This is my theme song. All right, I, had, I didn't play it last Sunday. I figured Dion got a theme song. I can have one in Jesus. This is my theme song, all right? This is really, I listen to this song every week, three, four times a week. Really, 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 I promise you. They finding it. I want y'all to find, I'm not going to stand you up yet. Look at your scriptures. Find Colossians 2nd chapter real quick. Colossians 2nd chapter. That's New Testament. Amen. And then I'm going to recognize all of our first-time visitors as soon as it's at the end of our service. Second chapter, Colossians. Uh, I want you to find it. I didn't put it on the board. I told the 9 o'clock crowd that I'm going to kind of not put the scriptures up for the sermon scriptures for us to read it because I truly want us to come in with a Bible or download and have a Bible app on your phone. Bible app on your phone. All right? So if you have it, say amen. And we're going to read from the New King James Version. New King James Version. All right? New King James Version. If y'all can't find it, don't worry about it. Don't, don't do, I mean, the, my theme song, not y'all scripture. New King James Version. We'll do it at the end of, end of the service. All right, New King James. You got it? Everyone have it? All right, let us stand. Let us stand. If you, if you, if you don't have the Bible, if you don't have it, then look at someone next to you. Ask them, can, can I hang out with you for a second? All right, just hang out. It's all right. It's all right. I hang out with you for a second. In the name of Jesus. All right, you ready? All right, we're going to, I want to read this together. If you got the New King James Version, okay? Don't read another version because you're going to be out of sync with the reading of it. All right, here we go. The ninth chapter, sec, Colossians 2nd second cha uh, second chapter, ninth verse. We're going to start there, all right? We'll read to the 15th. Here we go. For in him... 
dwells all the fullness. Can y'all see that? No? Are y'all reading or I just didn't hear y'all? All right, let's start this again, y'all. Here we go. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In him were all circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcisions of Christ. Stop right there. Let me, t let me explain this to you because I'm not going to go all the way into the detail of the, I like to give the backdrop of the text, but I need you to understand this piece because we're not going to discuss this piece and these two little points I need to give you. So, so here, Paul is dealing with uh, the church, uh, the Colossian church. He has not visited. They have not had a face-to-face. -face. He's, he's writing. As he planted churches, churches developed. This Colossians church developed. All right? So now he, he's writing them because there's some things going on in the church that they are still tapping into and bringing in the church some of the traditional ceremonial stuff that really has no power in it. And then some of the laws that have no power uh, uh, as it relates to not the covenant of, of God, but it just relates to what they did from a culture perspective. So, so here, he's writing and letting them know that, look, none of that stuff matter. And then he goes into the whole episode of the crucifixion of how Christ died and why he died and what the crucifixion represents and what the cross represents and all of those things to let them know this is the only thing that matters. All that other stuff really doesn't matter. This is what matters. And he goes not just... Uh, allowing them to see this, but he goes into detail explaining to them the Godhead and the power and what Christ has done and what the cross has done. Do y'all understand what I'm saying right now? That makes sense. So that's where we are. So he's talking about the circumcision. So in the Old Testament, every little firstborn boy would be circumcised to represent the covenant between God, the obedient covenant between God. Now he's saying, look, 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 since Christ has come, y'all still doing that stuff. No, 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 no. The circumcision now is of the heart. When Christ went to, went to the cross and God raised him from the dead, he, he canceled out all of that. And now the circumcision, those laws that were in place, the circumcision now is from the heart. That you have a heart like Christ. That you love like Christ. That you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now check this out. Let's continue to read. So circumcision, circumcision, where do we stop? We stop at 12. All right, here we go. Buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith and the working of God who raised him from the dead. Check this out. We talk about baptism. Symbolic gesture of baptism is going down with the old person coming up with the new, meaning that it symbols you giving your life to Christ. Washing the water represents washing in, in the Holy Spirit, in the blood of Christ, the Holy Spirit. Washing you clean. You're coming up a new person. That's why baptism is so important to the immersion of it. Be, what it represents. You get it? All right, here we go. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against you, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Catch this. Listen to this. This 15th one. Having disarmed principalities and power. Y'all see that? Disarm. Anything that can come up against you, disarm. Because of the cross. Watch this. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. All right. So the series, the series you see, Victory is Mine is the series. Because Jesus is our conquering king, we are victorious, conquerors, triumphant, winners, and glorious overcomers. How many of you believe that? How many, how many of you believe that? All right, check this out. I did this for the 9 o'clock crowd. I'm not, I'm not, I only got two points. I did this for the 9 o'clock crowd. Now I just need you to, if you believe in yourself and you love yourself and you appreciate yourself, I need you to give yourself some, 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 some respect. Give yourself. That's all you have for yourself. I see why y'all walk around like that. Hold on, stop.
stop, stop, stop. That's all. I mean, really, that's all. Okay, good. That's good. That's good. You, you did that. Now, watch this. Now, self didn't wake you up. Self didn't give you activities of your limb. Self didn't restore you in your right mind. Self didn't bless you because none of us should be here. Self blessed us to be here, right? Now I need you to give it up for God through Jesus Christ. Give it up for Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. So catch this. I'm getting ready to let you see. So, so what Paul is saying, watch, I'm going to let you sit down. Don't sit down yet. Just chill, chill. You just got here. So watch this, watch this. What Paul is saying is your intensity should be on a whole different level because of what you just read. And Paul says what I'm saying to you. It's not about all that stuff you got going on in your life, what you think should be doing in the church and happening in the church. This is solely about Jesus. This is solely about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That's the only reason why, watch this, this is what I'm getting ready to say. So the sermon, the sermon uh, series says, victory is mine. That's the sermon series. Victory at the cross. You can even say victory in the cross. But victory at the cross. That's why you can stand here. L listen to me. Listen, listen to me. You, you, you shortchange yourself in the applause. Your applause should never be longer, bigger than God's applause. But it, it, it can't, it, watch this. It can't be just as big as God's applause. Watch this. Oh, somebody said, what? What are you talking about, Dr. Sam? Because you say, great is he that is in me. That he is in the world. See, eventually, eventually as God continues to bless you and you continue to see God's hand working in your life, you're, when, when I say plot for yourself, you're really not applying for yourself. You're applying for the godliness that's in you. Because you realize that God has made you great. And you're tapping into your greatness. You may not walk in it the fullest right now. Young people don't understand this. But, but it's in you. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, it's in me. It's in me. No, no, no. Say it like you mean it. It's in me. It's in me. Say, because of the cross. Because of the cross. Because of the cross. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, victory at the cross. Victory at the cross. Now tell somebody else, you have victory at the cross. Now tell yourself, point to yourself real quick. Say, self, self. Victory, victory at the cross. At the cross. Victory, victory in the cross. In the cross. I, have I have it. It's on me. It's with me. It dwells with me. It lives with me, and I believe it. I, I, I heard a little old school priest come up. I'm sorry, y'all. That little old school came up a little bit. <laughs> this is real talk. This is real talk. I don't need you leaving out of here after today without that in your spirit. You, do you hear me? I don't care what you're going through. I don't care if you came in here and you're like, man, I don't know how tomorrow is going to end up. I'm telling you, tomorrow it will be all right. For the Bible says weeping may endure for a night. Boy, would y'all have some folk in here ready to have some church? But joy! Oh, joy comes in the morning. Guess what? It's morning time, y'all! Oh, fist pump, fist pump, fist pump. Somebody next to you. Take your seat. Take your seat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, catch this, catch this, catch this. This is important for us to understand. The entire, the entire reality resurrection a series of Christ pivots on the theological thrust and divine destiny of victory and triumph. That's what it's all about. All this is about is victory and triumph. That's major. How many of you, I asked the 9 o'clock crowd, how many of you seen Passion of Christ? Raise your hand. Just keep them high. Keep them high. No, no. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I said, raise your hand, you do like this. If I had a stack of money in my hand, say, whoever raised their hand first. And what I'm talking about is greater than money. Please believe you me. How many of you have seen the passion of Christ? 
All right, put your hands down. How many of you have not seen the Passion of Christ? Raise them high. Check this out. Uh, and you parents that have not shown your children that you bring to church every Sunday because it's a great depiction of what Jesus went through on our behalf. Three amens, four amens. So y'all ain't seen it. Y'all need to go back and see it again. This is real talk. So, so I'm submitting to you, and you just kind of helped my case study. I'm submitting to you that, that we look at this whole crucifixion reality series, because that's what it is, this reality episode of the resurrection uh, and crucifixion episode. We look at it just like we're glancing over anything else. And, 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 and like Paul, we have to make sure that we understand, and it's in our spirit, how severe and important this was. This is real talk. This is real talk. My job, and I'm telling you, my job in this season is first for me to truly understand every single day, and don't forget it, how important it was. If you ever, if you ever watch the Passion of the Christ, Passion of Christ, you, a, a, a lot of the scene when they were torturing Jesus, I believe was a little bit underrated, un understated, based on what the Bible actually says. And if you read about crucifixion, but it was on point. So I say that so you can truly look at what you're saying you, you believe and what you serve and God and why he did it. And how much he, here we go, how much he loved us. So, so it gives a whole different, whole different perception and understanding and perspective to John 3.16 when it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's not talking about he gave him to hang out with the disciples. It's talking about he gave him to go to Calvary, to be beaten, hung on the cross, ridiculed. Despise, scourge for us. Why? So we can stand here without a shadow of a doubt, knowing 110% that you have victory and you're triumphant. Watch this. Especially, especially. If you feel you are under a rock right now. Oh, this is real talk. So Jesus does not just go through this just to go through it. As believers, we must be able to see this. And when I say victory at the cross, victory in the cross, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying once you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, victory is automatically yours. Now, whether you tap into the fullness of it or not, that's on you. That's why the Bible teaches us that word, what? Hide in my heart so I won't sin against. So I, I, I got to know the word, number one. Number two, I, I really got to realize how, how Christ lived. I'm going to show you something here in a second that's important for us to make sure that we're implementing this in our life. So, so, so victory, victory says, victory at the cross says, he defeated the rulers and powers of the spiritual world. You, 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 you have to understand this. Listen to me. You, you're not wrestling. We talk about this all the time. You're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, wickedness in our place. That's why I don't trip off people. That's why I don't, I don't get all excited about politics and all of that stuff. I was, I was playing ball Thursday night. Watch this. One of the guys came up, and he was just like, well, and he was talking about the whole political stuff that was going on. And I said, dude, listen to me. Hear me, hear me good. Another brother, hear me. Man, I, if this person does this or this person gets in, does this, then I don't know. Man, I ain't want to worry about that. Let me tell you what you need to be worrying about, my man. You need to be worrying about whether or not you love God through Jesus Christ. And then if that's the case, then you better be preparing yourself financially, making sure all your stuff is in order, because they can't, nobody can do anything to you. If you trust God, you love God. Hello? Hello, 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 hello. Hello, this, this is real. This is real. So, so everything that's operating behind the scene, because people are not the issue. It's spiritual powers. I hope y'all catching this. It's spiritual wickedness and high places. 
I don't care how high it gets. It can't go higher than God. And because of the cross and what transpired, the Bible says, again, he defeated the rulers and powers of the spiritual world. With the cross, Jesus won the victory over them and led them away as defeated and powerless prisoners for the whole world to see. That's what this represented. This is what Paul is telling them. He said, look, man, this is God. Jesus, God here. The God here. This is it. Nothing else. So that's why we're able to say Jehovah Jireh. That's why we're able to, to say Jehovah Nisi. That's why we're able to say El Shaddai. Names of God. That's why we're able to say, God, you're my provider, you're my protector, you're my Lord, you're my, boy, boy, boy. That's why we're able, even, watch this, especially in the midst of our going through, we have to claim exactly what God has presented us in, in Jesus Christ. This is real. So check this out. Got two things to give you real quick. Let me give you, and I'm gone. How many of y'all got dinner reservations? Y'all ain't going to raise your hand anyway. That's all right. I ain't asking to come. <laughs> got my own. So I'm going to give you this. Watch, watch. I do not need you to leave out of here without fully understanding this. Because all, no, nothing else matters. I don't think we do a good job of this in Christendom. Nothing else really matters. Your job don't matter. Husband don't matter. Wife don't matter. Your boo thing don't matter. Hey. Children don't matter. The only thing that matters. I know some of y'all ladies like, oh, oh boy. What's up? But, but, bro, I ain't going to tell on you. I ain't going to tell on you, brother Davey. They, they got that little newborn, little boy. And I said, children don't matter. He looked at his wife. She, she didn't see him, but I'm telling on him now. I feel you, bro. I feel you. I feel you. But none of that matters. The only thing that matters is this. So watch this. I need us spiritually, spiritually to intensify our understanding and connect with this on a whole different level of understanding. This is real. So check this out. The text says in verses 9 and 10, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. That's why it doesn't matter who's the president as a believer. It don't matter. You still vote. You do your thing. All of that. Don't get all twisted because your person didn't win or somebody else won. Whatever it is, don't get twisted because of that. You just do what you do. Because God's hand is on everything. Notice what the text says. I don't care what goes on. You didn't get the job, so what? They got, God has another one. Don't ever say they hating on me. Who cares? Good they hating on you. Somebody need to hate on you so you can start trusting God a little more. Amen. That's part of it. Who cares somebody's hating on you? Who cares? Because if you connected to God through Jesus Christ and you really, really are trying to live a life pleasing to God, you're not perfect, then it does not matter. Don't worry. Don't sweat the small. That's what the enemy wants you to focus on. Because here in the text, the Bible says, and you are completing him who is the head of all principalities and power. Everything that's operating, watch this, for God he's in charge of, and especially everything that's operating against God. So if you're on God's side, you don't have to worry about it. Why? Because you got Jesus on the right hand of the Father interceding for you because he went to the cross for you. Does that make any sense? So, so, so bottom line up front, guess what? Because of the cross, you are complete in the cross. Do you hear me? You are complete in the cross. Now, our little, our little wisdom and understanding, we think complete something else. So we, we think that, that I'm complete when I got all my, my ducks in a row. I got everything. No, 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 no. So I'm a, you're complete spiritually because it's the spiritual realm that, that, that he's conquered. That's the, y'all hear me? That's the cause all realm. I'm always going to teach that and say that because not enough people know that the spiritual realm is cause all realm. So you don't have to worry about people and things. I promise you. So you're complete as a believer. He's already completed everything in your life on your behalf. 
but it requires you to have faith. Watch this. Let me, let me give you, get, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get this to you. Complete means, and, and here in the text, in the Greek, and some other version says fullness, but the majority of them say complete. But all fullness and everything else that says anything other than complete has complete in the definition. So the word here is plerao. That's the Greek word for complete. What it means to make full, someone say make full, make to fill up. I like this one. I like this one. To fill to the full. Tell your neighbor, to fill to the full. I'm filled to the full. Oh, boy, 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 boy. It gets better. Check this out. Check this out. To render full, to fill to the top, all the way to the top. Watch this. So that nothing shall be wanting to full measure. So you already have everything at your disposal. And the, the, the reason why we don't understand, because we got to tap into it through God and God through Jesus Christ spiritually. First and foremost. And then what happens is God starts to manifest himself in our life because you worship God in spirit and in truth. You hear me teach this all the time. He starts to manifest himself in our lives and show us his power and start to move things and orchestrate things around us. Why? Because we're tapping into the spirit realm, which is the cause of all realm, which is what Christ has conquered, the principalities and powers of everything. Oh, boy, I hope y'all catching this right now. So stop getting... I want to say something, but I'm not going to say it. Stop getting it all in a twist. But understand and get this, that, that you are complete. Now, now check this out. This, this other part of complete. To cause to abound, to furnish or supply liberally. You know, you know liberally, freely. Freely. Do y'all you, hear what I'm saying? Young people, catch this, Freely. Just to give it out freely. More than you can imagine. More than you can accept. That's why when you, when you, look, at, when you look at giving and tithing, it says open up windows, pour you out blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. <laughs> how many of y'all believe this? How many, of you, how many of you believe this? I mean, really. If you don't believe it, it's all right. Ask God just to touch your heart and give you a deeper understanding of it. So check this out. Check this out. Complete in the cross. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So, so and complete in the cross, now like everything else, the issue in Christendom a lot of times is we get information. But there's always some stuff that we need to do, some things that we have to do to certify and solidify whatever promise God has given us. Do you hear me? And the issue that has transpired generation after generation, and it's all through the Bible, is believers and those who believe in God and believers in Christ have got lazy spiritually. Is real. And we want to speak it and God just to do it. But because the Bible teaches us we have to deny ourselves every day, we're battling every day. Satan comes back every time. You may, you may look, you, you, you trusted God and, and you walked out and God showed his hand and you were victorious because automatically you're victorious. But there's another situation that's going to come up because he's going to come when it presents itself again. So it continues. The cycle continues. So if the cycle continues, that means we have to continue to grow and the cycle of, watch this, the cycle of our spiritual maturity has to continue to advance. You can't be in 2024 what you were in 2018. I hope y'all catching this. So you, got, you have to continue to grow. That's, again, that's why the Bible said deny self every day. That's why the Bible, I just used the other scripture we've been doing for, for a night, but what? Joy comes in the morning as a new day. So a new day, a new level of faith. A new day, a new level of faith. A new day, a new testimony. A new day, a new thanks. A new day, a new opportunity for God to show up and show out. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you have to keep growing because Satan is not playing. The enemy is not playing. Paul is telling them that. Look, this is God. Don't worry about that other stuff. Check this out. Complete. So the three things that you have to do, it's a must. It's a must. These are simple words. We talk about them all the time, but I'm going to shed a little different light on them. Somebody say pray. Pray. Say pray. Position, position, praise. praise. Pray, praise. position, praise. praise. You see it? Now check this out. This is important because this is not just, this is a different perspective for you to understand. This is not, now nah, I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. This is not, oh, let me hurry up and get to work and you're in your car. Oh, Lord, just cover me today. I thank you for this day. 
Do you hear me? This is a do or die prayer life. So you have to understand this is do or die. The reason why Christ goes to the cross and does for us, because it was a do or die life or death situation for us. Now, guess what? I have to have and understand life or death prayer. Listen to me. We cannot play with this. This is next level stuff. Why? Because the promises and the magnitude of blessings that are attached to this, Satan understands this. And Satan is not just going to stand by and allow us to do this because God has allowed him to do whatever he can do, whatever he wants to do, but he ain't in control. We are still in control of whatever the enemy starts, tries to do. And God is just showing him his hand and just let him do what he does and it's all right. Man, I'm all right. But I'm in control of any situation. Watch it. So that means, watch, if I'm believing God for the big, spiritually big, if I'm believing that God is going to make a way out of nowhere, guess what? God says, I will do it in God through Jesus Christ, through Christ. At the cross, it's already done. It's already complete. You don't have to worry about it. It's already done. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you to take your prayer life to a die, do or die life, a prayer life. That's what I'm waiting on. Because there's some demons and some spiritual battles that you will face that elementary prayer life won't cut. I wish I had some poem. Listen, listen, let me give you scripture real quick and we're just about done. Philippians 4 and 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything pray. Everything, what? Pray. Everything, what? Pray. Everything, pray. Act like you know nothing. Pray. Do you, do you, are y'all catching this? Just because you think and you smart. Look, I got a bachelor's degree. I have a master's degree. And I don't just have a regular master's degree. I have a master's of divinity, which is like a three-year degree from Morehouse School of Religion. I have an earned doctorate degree. I know nothing. Real talk. I'm not telling you that to brag. I'm telling you that to let you know. If I got all of that and I say I know nothing, no, I, I have to pray about everything. Why? Because it's a do or die situation. Because Satan is not here to applaud me. He's here to take me out. But I don't worry about that because, I, watch this, I'm on God's side. And God already said through the cross in the Calvary that, guess what, I'm complete. Everything I need is at my disposal. Everything you need is at your disposal. All you have to do is trust in the Lord, have a great prayer life, stay in communication with God, speak stuff over things. Watch this. A lot of times we leave a lot of blessings on the table because we have our own pity parties. Instead of speaking, you will not have my family. You will not have my finances. You will not have my marriage. You will, So what? Take the job. God got another job. You, oh boy, I wish I had some believers in the place. This is real. It's do or die. Turn to your neighbor and say your prayer life is do or die. That's why, that's why, that's why God says, effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, availing much. Watch this, not only prayer life, here we go, solid heaven position. I'll give you a different perspective on this. I'm just about done. Solid heaven position. A solid heaven position. That means prayer, and now you got to be in position. That's what Jesus. Well, notice everything in the crucifixion episode, if you really look at it. He, prayer was, prayer, prayer was imperative. That's why he got upset with the disciples. His boys, he took up with him to pray. Like, man, every time he come back after he went up and had his little prayer meeting. <laughs> hey. Prayer was important. Watch this. Having position is important. Listen to me. Watch this. Heaven position says this. The first position is what Paul is saying. I'm just about done. First position, we use the scripture all the time. It says, abide in me, and I'll abide in you. The, the word abide here, meno, M-E-N-O, in the Greek, is remain. Remain in me. Do not allow your circumstances to get you out of position. I hope y'all catching this. Not just you physically, but you spiritually and mentally. So sometimes, sometimes, no, no, let me say this. A majority of times, we don't check out physically. We check out mentally and spiritually. 
This is real. Because physically, you can see me coming. You can see me serving. Ooh, watch this. And it appears that I'm there mentally and spiritually because I showed up. But inside, there's turmoil. Inside, there's gossip. Inside, there's mess. And, oh, boy, oh, boy. Inside, God's not the priority. And, oh, boy. But it appears that way. Ooh. So it says, remain in me. Remain says this, continue, dwell, endure, endure everything in me to be present. To stand, to tarry, remain in me. Sometimes you just got to wait. Sometimes you just got to get somewhere and cry, get your ugly cry on, get your ugly cry on, get your ugly cry on. Then once you got it all out of you, dry up your tears and decree and declare that I am complete in the cross. So th that's the heavenly position. It's not about coming to church, serving, and working. No, 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 no. It's all about your heart, your mental and your spiritual. Your mental and your spiritual is going to make you work and work the right way. Yeah. Serve the right way. Give the right way. Oh, oh, oh y'all hear me? This is, this is, don't play with this because Satan's not playing. He's the original OG. Y'all hear me? I put two originals on him. He's the original. No one knows the tricks like the devil. Huh? Any of y'all been to heaven and seen anything in heaven? He was there, got kicked out. Watch this, watch this. Not only position, everything praise. I didn't get to get to that at the second service, but I'm going to close right here. Everything praise. Everything praise. Everything praise. So you kind of do or die prayer life. Solid heaven position. Everything pray. One of the characteristics of the last days, and y'all won't be able to agree with this, is a lack of praise and thanksgiving. So when you see the word praise in the definition, it has a lot to do, more so to do, with thanking God than anything. So when praise and worship starts, if you're truly singing praise and worship, that means you're singing adoration and songs to God, thanking God and speaking about God's goodness. So, and the reason why, watch this. I'm going to give you a quick one because you got to understand it. That's why you can't sit. And some of y'all, y'all probably already know this because I talked this. That's why when you come in here for praise and worship, don't just sit there. Because what you're doing is singing to God and you're ushering the presence of God. Amen, amen. The spirit of God. Because there are a lot of other spirits that have come into this place. Some people may be suicidal. Some people are ready to give up. Some people are stressed out. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? So that's why the old church says when blessings go, praises go up, what? Blessings come down. Because that's what we are designed to do. We are made to praise God. We are made to give God thanks. We are made to acknowledge that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I hope y'all catching this. Oh, this was good to me when I was standing out like, I can't wait to give it to them. But if they don't want theirs, God, give it to me. Give me their blessing. If they don't want to hear this one, please give it to me. Everything plays. Watch this. And in and, and, and the last days, the last days, this is the characteristic. That's why 2 Timothy, third chapter, that's the scripture says, for people will be lovers of self. Doesn't that sound like now? It's two, two, two thousand something years. Watch it. Lovers of self. Lovers of money. Don't, don't think money is evil. Money is not evil. The love of money is evil. Here we go. Proud, arrogant, abusive. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Y'all play this, what I'm getting ready to say, back to your children. Disobedient to their parents. Now play it back to yourself because some grown folk are disobedient still to their parents. Go ahead and say amen. Ungrateful and unholy. That, that, that's the sign. So God says, if you ever needed to thank me, if you ever needed to praise me, it is right now, 2024, this day, March 31st, in the name of Jesus, to recognize how much I need to say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, I'll praise you. Watch this. First Thessalonians teaches us well, the fifth chapter, 16, 18 verse, it says, rejoice always. 
Oh boy, always says this. Always says at all times on all occasions. So you're telling me, God, that I need to rejoice and just be glad when the hellhounds are on my life or on my track and it looks like I'm not going to make it, I'm stressed out. Yeah, that's when you really need to rejoice. Why? Because I'm complete and I'm not worried about the hellhound. All I do is do like God says, I rebuke you in the name of what? Jesus. No weapons formed against me shall prosper. Everybody that speaks against me. Oh boy, I hope y'all catching this. This is real talk. Watch this, watch this, watch this. It says, it says, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Watch this. Some of you folk that have, you, you're visiting or you haven't heard this or you have not done this. I dare you. I dare you. This is where I get it from. I dare you to set your cell phones. I'm going to keep talking about this to everybody when I'm in the crowd. Raise their hand and say I'm doing it. Set your cell phone for 12 noon every day. At 12 noon, I don't care what you're doing, you stop for about three or four minutes and just thank God for everything. I hope y'all catching this. Oh, this is powerful. I promise you, you won't get anything more powerful than this all week long. I guarantee you. Thank God for everything, especially your go-through. And I dare you to do it and watch what he does. Watch this, watch this, watch this. So, so, so check this out. Check this out. It's a life thing. It's a God thing. The last scripture, verse 15, says this. And this is an amplified version. Don't, don't, don't play that again. I'm still cranked up. Don't give me no funeral music today. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities. Notice. When he, had, when he disarmed the rulers and authorities, the crumb. When he disarmed the rulers and authorities, the Amplified Version says, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us. He made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal process. The whole process. The triumphal entry into in, on, on Psalms, uh, Palm Sunday, triumphal entry into the city. When they beat him, he took it. He could have called a legion of angels at any given time. Are y'all catching me? 6,000, no, 6,000 angels coming. Triumphant process. When, 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 watch this. When they, when they beat him, hung him on the cross, buried him. Triumphant process. Catch this out. Check this out. Having triumphant over them through the cross. Last thing, take a picture of this because you need this one. You are alive and powerful. You are alive and powerful. Do you hear what I'm saying? You are alive and powerful. Why? Because check this out. As Christ hangs on the cross, and you got to get this, you got to get this. Guess what he takes? He takes everything you can possibly deal with on the cross in your life. So what? You got divorced. Who cares? Speak to God. He will heal you. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 okay, okay. So what, so what, so what? You got haters. He had more haters than you can imagine. And guess what? His haters took a hit out on him. Who cares that you shout because you, you got haters? I mean, don't even let them know that you know that they hate him. Oh, boy, I wish I had some believers in the place right now. That's why the Bible says you got to position yourself, pray always, continue. Don't even give them time of your prayer. God, and when you pray for them, you say, God, just forgive them for they know not what they do. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because you have already overcome the haters. You got to let them know in God through Jesus Christ. So what? So what? Check this out. So what? So what? So what? Huh, watch this. Everything. Everything. Sin. Any sin that you can imagine. Watch this, watch this. So what your mama, your daddy, what nothing? So what they did this, say, so what they did that? Generational strongholds that you don't know that's even attached to you. So what? Who cares? Who cares about them? Why? Because I have accepted Christ. I break all strongholds through Jesus Christ. 
nothing can have me. Nothing can have me because the priority of this cross is for me. To save me from me. To teach me to understand, watch this, to understand, what? watch this, that divorce can't stop me, sin can't stop me, generational strongholds can't stop me, haters can't stop me, and most importantly, I hope you're in the building right now, death cannot hold me down. That's why, through God and Jesus Christ, I got eternal life, no dead job, no dead relationship, dead people. Nothing dead can hold me. I don't even like dead stuff. Oh, this is real. Tell your neighbor you got to get rid of some of them dead folk around you, dead stuff around you. Start believing life because you are alive and powerful. Everybody take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Don't blow it out. Blow it in your hand. Blow it, blow it, blow it. You still living. I'm done. You're still alive. If you knew, and I'm done, if you knew, trust me on this one. I'll close. 45 seconds. I'm going to give you this. If you knew, and this is real, the realest I can get, if you knew the tax on the enemy, of the enemy, that would have taken you out, even in the midst of your sinful life, even in the midst of your BC self before Christ, because someone was praying for you. Catch this. If God could show you a glimpse of the demons and the spiritual underworld that worked against you and is working against you that should have took you out, in times where, where you would come from the club, drinking, and dozing off, and yet you still here. Oh, but this is real talk. Times you don't even know that if you would have stayed in that spot just for a few more minutes, oh, it would have got you. Oh, boy. Spots you don't even know that because you were running a little late. You were running a little late. You didn't take that highway. Oh boy, I hope you catch me. If God would just show us that, I promise you, everybody, er, everybody, everybody would be at the altar on their face right now. If he would show us a glimpse of just some of the stuff that he has covered us from, the grace and mercy that he has provided over us. Man, I served 21 years in the United States Army, and I've been in some, uh, a few battles, and I remember, I remember I remember and I reflect back on that stuff and say God that's why I'm gonna shout a little different that's why I don't, I don't need y'all I don't, I don't need y'all to motivate me to shout I don't I don't need y'all to motivate me to say thank you Jesus when I pray I say God in the name of Jesus you don't have to get my attention life don't have to get my attention I want you to know right now I'm grateful and thankful for everything I'm thankful for this piece of bread that I'm getting ready to put butter on put it on the skillet in the name of Jesus oh boy y'all better catch this this is real talk. Once we start doing that, then watch what opens up. Once we start serving him and say, God, I'm giving my whole life. Took all our sins and our stains and every, every excuse that we could have, he took it here. This is where it went. Here, the tomb, they thought they had it. They, th they thought, he, he, he's gone. He in the tomb. The only time I seen somebody come out the tomb, the disciple says, when Jesus raised him from the dead. And he's gone. So maybe, maybe that was somewhat of a fluke. Maybe, man, maybe I misunderstood him. Maybe all this time he was showing him this, he wasn't as what he's supposed to be. So that's why the disciples run and hide and go everywhere and they hide. And they all, I'm out of here. I'm done. And confused and to stay stressed out, confused, life upside down, don't know what they're going to do. Just sitting there, windows closed, scared of life, scared of death, scared of all day, are panicking, panicking. Trying to reflect back on everything that Jesus says and say, man, it wasn't supposed to go down like this. Jesus, they don't beat you, hung you on the cross, and then it's over. They don't bury you, dude. 
what are we going to do? The last 36 months, I've been hanging out with this dude. I dropped everything, my fishing rod, everything, my life, and I hung out with him. It was good. Man, he was giving sight to the blind, feeding people with two-piece fish, five loaves of bread. He was doing his thing, and we, were, we got to see it, man. I couldn't wait to tell my kids when they're growing up, everything. But he's gone now. What? I'm wasting 36 months. That's us. God, when is it my time? Everybody else getting blessed. When is my time? I'm serving you, God. I'm giving. I'm doing this. When is my time? Why is my family all jacked up, God? I'm trusting you. Why is this happening to me, God? They thought they had him. So there is for God to show the magnitude of what's getting ready to take place. Because none of this has ever happened in the history of time. Oh, this is, this is deep. So the ladies run down to the tomb to wash them up and clean them. Watch this. They see the angel. They see, oh my God, Jesus. They go back and tell them, huh? No, you got to be kidding. I'm like, nah, I can't see it till I see the holes in his hand. Peter run it down because he was the biggest baddest. But he run it down. I got to see this. I got to see this. I got to see this because I need some help right now. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. I need to see Jesus because my life is all upside down. I don't know what's going on. I need to see it. For my sins, all that stuff. <laughs> For all the haters that thought they had me. This right here is for my victory and my trial. If he does not get out the grave, doomed. And for that reason, because life seems upside down sometimes for all of us. For that reason, I have to pray like it's do or die and ask God to show me and help my heart because there are going to be times, Sister D, when life is going to try to get the best of me. And I have to reflect back on you did that God so I don't have to worry number one about myself because I'm my worst, my worst enemy. And then especially I don't have to worry about the other stuff and the other people around me. And I can just focus on you and know that you're going to work it out. But the only way I do this is I draw closer to Christ. I learn more about Jesus. I try to be more like Christ. That's why the Bible said, let this mind be in me. That's also in Christ Jesus. Because I'm only complete in him. Brother Calvin, come here. Come here. Everyone stand. says anything that we go through as believers is for us to become better. Don't look at whatever you're going through. I know you've been, you've been that guy that has moved around and built stuff and constructed stuff and doing your, your craft. 
without any hesitation when young fellas couldn't move. So in this season, you thank God for your glory. And you tell God, whatever it is, God, that I need to see in this, make me more like Christ. That's what sometimes it's like that. Yeah. God loves you, your heart is right. So I just want to encourage you. I was thinking about you the other day. I was praying for you the other day. I had no intention to call you up here, but God said, do this. And you need to hear this. I was praying for you. And I know how vibrant you were a few months ago and all that stuff. And it seems like one thing after another after another. God says, trust me. Trust me. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak against every attack from the enemy. I speak against it. I speak against, and God says you will live and not die. In the name of Jesus, you hear me? And we're going to, watch this, watch this. He's going to blow your mind. You keep trusting him, you hear me? Because there's great things that he has in for you, in store for you. Come in, man. I speak it in the matchless mighty name of Jesus over your life. So if you're here today, you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to offer Christ to you right now. Because that's how we, we, we tap into our completeness. It's in God through Jesus Christ. So if you're watching with us, streaming live with us, or you watch this as a recording, I want to offer Christ to you. It's a simple process, something that I've, I've just, I've just padded some things to say based on what God says. So I ask you to repeat these things that if you are seeking God, be saved. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Repeat these things after me. Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe, God, that you raised him from the dead. God, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins in Jesus' name. And I receive Christ in my heart, in my life, as my Lord and my Savior. I speak according to your word that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I decree and declare this day, according to your word, that I am saved. Saved from the penalty of death and sin. Be it done unto me. It is done unto me in Jesus' name. Someone shout hallelujah in the place. For those that accepted Christ, this is the first day to the rest of your life. Shout on their behalf in the name of Jesus. So if you're here today, you don't have a church home. You don't have a church home. I want you to be part of Fellowship Christmas in the church. You may have been coming Sunday after Sunday, but I want you to be a part of this ministry in the name of Jesus. If you're here, are there others? Don't, don't hesitate. There's no greater place, no greater time, no greater season than now. In the name of Jesus. If you're a little shy, don't worry about it. You go to the Connect Center at the service. Let them know you want to be part of this ministry. I just am grateful and thankful about everything that God is doing in the life of fellowship. Grateful and thankful for his people. Grateful and thankful for what he's about to do, what he's done, and what he's doing presently again and again and again. So,
think about is I want you to think. Just think about two things. Two things. Real quick, we're going to pray this out. Two things that you want to pin to the cross right now in your life. Two things, whatever it is, just think about those two things. Lift up your hands. Eternal God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We praise, magnify your name, God. Thank you for everyone that's assembled in this place. God, we thank you for your son in Calvary. We thank you for the grave. We thank you for the cross. And most of all, God, we thank you for your power of rising, raising, lifting Jesus up out of the grave. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your faith? And for that reason, we're complete. And we're alive and powerful. In you, through Jesus Christ. So as your under shepherd, God, I pray over everyone right now. Every teenager, every baby, every kid, every adult, every single person, every married person, every single parent, every parent with children. Pray over them, God, that you continue, God, to give them a love of Christ. That they can walk in their completeness. And for those that have not accepted Christ, God, break their heart. That they cry, what must I do to be saved? So we thank you, we praise you. In the matchless, mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Everyone in the building say, be it done unto me. It is done unto me. In Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor real quick. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Look at somebody you didn't come with. Look at someone you didn't come with. I'm complete in the cross. I'm complete in the cross. I'm not worried. I'm not bothered. I'm not ashamed because I have Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. Hey, look, check this out. Check this out. There are, there are, there are treats in the back. There are pictures, free pictures. I think we have a 360 now. What are they playing? What are they playing? What kind of music are they playing on 360? Anybody know? Have you ever been back there? Okay. There's a 360. 360. Hey, you got my theme song? Hey, they need to put my theme song on the, on the 360. Hey, this is my theme song, y'all. Y'all need to look this up. This is my theme This is my theme song I listen to. Don't hate on me. Don't hate on me. Don't y'all move yet. Y'all got it. I'm telling you, it's going to help me. I know people going back to their say, hey, I thought y'all said y'all had it. Trying to be the greatest of all time and say it's all God. Listen to the words. I've been grinding all day.